They started becoming nationally known because they started taking trips. And everywhere they went, <laughs> it was, the crowds were ecstatic. Uh, there was so much joy. And you could tell it in their faces, in their hearts, in their, in their expressions, and the smiles. And uh, they would come up to you and, and just and hug you and, and just give you all this love. And, and they would say, when you coming back? <laughs> and everywhere we went, we got that. We just became a well-known entity here. But then we started going to California, and then we went south, and then we went on the East Coast. When we went south one year, we had Two Greyhound buses full of kids, two to a seat. The kids would get off the bus, and the people would wonder, when are they going to, where are they coming from? You know, they're coming from under the seats or somewhere, and they would just, you know, and then when they start singing, people's mouths would just go like, like, is that coming out of those kids, and I mean in three-part harmony, I mean, and it wasn't, you know, your little mealy mouth singing. Kids, I mean, they, they belted it, you know, they belted it out. I always had these dreams when I was a little girl in Carthage, Texas. I dreamed of going all over the world because then for African Americans that would just be a dream. After the choir started and I had all these kids with all of this talent and I decided that I want somebody besides folks in Seattle, Washington to hear them. And that's when I decided to start traveling and I think the biggest thing that, that they enjoyed doing uh, for the first time was just to go east of the mountain. We went from here to Yakima, and then from here, all the way to um, Spokane. Spokane, and those kids thought they had been around the world. We are rhythmic people. The way that my white counterparts would sing Amazing Grace would be very plain, and then we would add all of the the the, the color to it, so to speak, for lack of a better word. <laughs> Amazing grace, Lord, how sweet the sound. She's a perfectionist. And I feel that she felt that if you're going to do something, you give it your all. She's proven that you can do anything in life that you set your mind to. She has a knack for finding uh, whatever you're good at and nudging you to that next level. I think if you combine all of those elements, spiritual and love and caring, you can begin to create a patronal state and right. Gifted, talented, headstrong. She loved to be in charge. Hatred's always been her own person. She does not cater to the powerful. She speaks truth to power. And she's serious about helping people. That was as good as there was out there in the world, period. You can talk about your Aretha Franklin's, your Whitney Houston's. She could have sung with the best. What makes the voice is that she is able to express who she is. And who she is is a healer, a preacher, 
I've seen grown men weep when they hear it. The Holy Spirit's Gospel Choir took that music and the vision of Pat Wright took it to a level that has never been taken before. It was a privilege to watch her do what she does. It's a gift. She's not a musician. She's a, she's a messenger of God. Lord, right now.